so let's talk about them a little bit. So of course there's the three sphere, Euclidean space, void space. And then we can take this product matrix. So if we're going to be S2 across a real line, I'll put them in the S3 column because it's kind of spherical. Now if you take the natural thing that goes here, E2 cross R, let's put it in. We'll put it in brackets. Because it's not really anything new. If you take E2 cross R, it's just a fill in free space. And here we get H2 cross R. So these are now five geometries. Where do the other three come from? Well, they're kind of twisted products. Now, it's a little hard to describe that. Let me just write down the names first of all. And there's another one which I suppose goes under here. So, what are these two doing? I put one the same line because they have sort of similarity with each other. They are both, in a natural sense, bundle over E2 or H2 with 5 of the real one. So as a natural sense, this is a bundle over the Euclidean plane, that's why it's in that column with 5 of the real line, and this is a bundle over the hyperbolic plane with 5 of the real line. Okay. What is this doing? Well, this is a bundle the other way up. It's a bundle over the real line, with fiber you could in plane. Now, topologically, any such model is trivial, of course, a product. But the metric on these things is completely different from product metric. So I can't, because I'm not going to spend time talking about that. That's a fact. Now, having said this, you might wonder what about the gaps? What will be in this gap? This will be a bundle over the two sphere with fiber, the real line. Well, that's actually going to be. S2 cross R. There is something that naturally fits in here, in fact, which is a bundle over the two sphere with five of the circle. But that's just a three sphere. Now. So you get the same geometry all over again. And here, you can think about bundles over the line with five of the sphere. You can just get S2 cross R again. And here, you don't get any different from H2 or something So, these things in brackets should be ignored, and it's the ones that are not in brackets that matter, and they're just eight of those. Now, to prove that those are the eight, of course, you've got to first of all define your classification scheme. So, just to take my that's what you get. I'll erase these because they're not really quantum. Okay, there are the eight. So now we've got eight, we can ask the same question as before, but now does every closed three manifold have a geometric structure or will one of these eight? And the answer is still very immediately no. And why is that? Well, it's still because topologically, I haven't said what the topology is actually, these extra ones down here. Topologically, these are all very boring spaces. So, topologically, this is the three sphere, of course, that is Euclidean space, and so is that. Topologically, that's also Euclidean space, so is that, and so is that, and so is that. So we actually, when we look at these eight spaces, there's only three different topologies. You've got three sphere, S2 cross R, and all these others, the Euclidean space. So all I have to give you is a closed manifold of universal recovery is not any of those three. And for any connected sum. <coughs> Oh, 
other than RP3 next to some RP3 has universal color. Not anamorphic to S3, R3, or S2 plus R. So why is that? Well, if you have a connected sum, what that means is you take the closed manifold M1 and remove a ball from it, do the same here, and then glue them together on the resulting sphere. So we get a two-sphere in the middle of the manifold, M1 minus 4. When you take the universal current of this manifold, it's going to have in the pre image of the sphere lots and lots of spheres, and they will, in all cases except this one, cut the manifold up in a very complicated way, proving that it can't possibly be this. The universal covering can't be any of these. What happens to take the universal covering has a kind of branching structure. You get, there's a two sphere, and you get something with two sphere boundary components. And then it keeps branching and branching in a very, very complicated space, which in no way can be homeomorphic to any of those three. The only case when that doesn't work is when you have this. It's an exercise for interest in being able to check that. So it's still obviously not the case that every closed manifold that's a geometric structure, one will run these eight, because lots of manifolds are connected to sums. Well, the next step is clear, of course, but external connected sums. I'll ask the same question. <laughs> is this a hint that I'm writing too small? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, right, I'll write bigger. I'll have to. Um, where were we? It's up, so I need to Oh, can I? Right. So, this is definition. Three manifolds prime. If, well, what I wanted to say, it's like a prime number. A prime number is one you can't factorize. Well, of course, that's not quite true. Any number, three, can be written as one times three or three times one. And in the same way, three manifolds always have a trivial factorization on the connected sum, namely one of the factors being the three sphere. So it's prime if n homeomorphic to a connected sum b implies a or b is three sphere. Now, it's not entirely obvious that the, free manifold, the prime free manifolds exist, but it's true. And conveniently, <coughs> there is in fact a prime factorization here. Every compact free manifold is a connected sum of prime manifolds. So we can just start thinking of prime manifolds now. Same question. But now we look just restrict to the prime manifolds. And the answer is still unfortunately no. It's not quite so obvious this time that the answer is no. Um, yes, I should have said some words before I asked this question actually about the kind of manifolds you do get with geometric structures, and what the one is eight. Let me come back to that before I talk about the answer to this.